But Dostoevsky as a literary writer is pretty relevant today, um, especially in his works of The Underground Man, or The Underground, or The Underground Man is basically featured in this book, because it has a, very, it has a lot of relevance to the alienation of young modern people, especially in relation to things like social media, social platforms, and what they kind of inculcate into people when it comes to our interactions with others. It kind of has, over time, you know, it's created this dilemma where people are more interacting with people online than they are in real life, and then with that, they they feel this massive surge of alienation and disconnection from real people on a daily basis. But then there's a lot of other things that can associate to this, because in the book, the underground man is kind of a individual who is very much... He, he lives in his own fantasy of his own world. He kind of lives in the underground because he's repressed a lot of the things that he should really more so focus on, that he is actually kind of avoiding, which are things like his instincts, his ultimate desires, his... Physical, what is physical body, free the instincts, desires for him to attain. So things like relationships, getting to understand people, being more of a social animal, doing all of these things. And the underground man is fundamentally represented as this individual who's an extreme inflation of superiority because of his intellect. He uses conceptualizations to kind of really inflate his own ego because that's the only place where he can really go to, to kind of, you know have an identity for himself. So what he does, he's kind of this harsh critic of society. He criticizes everyone. He thinks there's a problem with most people based on his intellectual cynicism or his, his cynic outlook of the world or of the, the world that he lives in that he's characterized in this story and in this book. And at the same time, you can kind of see this in relation to a lot of people today, where people who kind of avoid the the harsh truth, they fall into an intellectual sphere, or they branch themselves into an identity that's based on some sort of intellectual opinion. They, they put themselves into like a priestly caste of some kind. And, you know, you can kind of see this in relation to elements of the Catholic Church, where they would, you know, suppress their instincts, and at the end of the day, that suppression of instincts itself causes this... causes the instinct to come out in a very negative way way or in a, in a very uh, troublesome way because it's not being attended to with proper care and you know the the internet in a sense or social media acts like that as well when it comes to people end, ending up projecting a certain image of what someone is in a certain way when we don't have that fundamental physical human connection and you know so it's like the the avoidance of the experience of life itself causes the projection causes the projection onto people, onto onto the environment of where those people are, and it causes this very cynical, rejecting state of mind. And the underground man is very much like this. Or let's, let's for example, let's take some weird identities that have been fundamentally founded through the alienation of um, the internet and, and, and fundamental alienation that it causes. So, for example, the incel. The incel is like, women are evil. All of these types of things that, you know... Um, that, you know, people who socialize are probably not very good people either. Like this, 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 this conceptual kind of uh, delusion that these individuals who identify themselves into these groups give themselves. The incel in that sense, uh, which you could say is predominantly a very young men kind of delusion that people fall into through the internet and using, you know, any of these other social platforms like um, 4chan and all this type of stuff. They fall into these underground man situ situations that are very Dostoevskyan, you know, they're very much Dostoevsky based uh, in the sense that, you know, they have this intellectual superiority complex that they, that they use to kind of try and fix or cope with the, the lack of, you know, courage that they have to actually go out in the world and actually experience these things to make proper judgments of them with their first hand experience. So then they paste individuals with their own projections in, in with a certain image and they say, well, this person's like this, this person's like that. And they don't actually have any first hand experience to actually actually create a true understanding or understand these people in a genuine way to actually figure out who they are. So you have this similar issue that people fall into. And 
it's 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 more of a coping mechanism than uh, than an actual courageous striving to you know deal with the harsh truths of their reality that they're you know that they're alienated that they're secluded that they live in their mother's basements that they they don't do these things that they should really be doing they're, and they're not attending to their instincts which they then moralize as bad and evil that they you know that they that they believe these certain individuals are not good individuals or they believe that they're bad or whatever and they don't confront their misery that they fundamentally don't confront their misery with experience or to attain experience because they don't want to be put in bad situations bad situations that that you know undermine their confidence or that their their lack of or their lack thereof of you know confidence in within themselves because you know if you're an individual that has a lot of social anxiety a lot of fear towards these things and then they fundamentally identify themselves with these very uh, polarizing identities online social identities these online anti-social identities they're going to more so uh, move away further and further from actually you know developing themselves in the physical world by going out and taking on these experiences and they're instead going to kind of put themselves more and more into these fantasies of life where they judge people with these uh, extreme cognitive biases from you know the lack of their experience of in the world or the fundamental misery that they cannot handle that comes from the world that they exist in so it's like you either confront misery that your misery the underground man either confronts his misery with experience or he ends up being a coward and using his intellect as like a coping mechanism to avoid the harsh truth of his existence and this is exactly what the under, underground man does he just lives in the underground he represses himself there. He submits to misery, and he submits to not having the confidence to overcome himself. And and this is what happens. This this there is an emanation of this in the modern world today, where it's like people are committing themselves only to social media. They interact with people only through this one lens of seeing the world, and people feel lonely. People feel miserable. People developing social anxiety developing these problems these these fears these phobias and you know people through the program for example they come out to me and they're like you know the, a lot of people that go on the calls they all have the same issues that they're trying to work through and you know thank god like the program is actually doing something for these people because it's actually helping them have that accountability that motivation that encouragement and you know this is this is why Dostoevsky was such a profound writer because a lot of what he said was true he was much more of a psychologist in the same sense that Nietzsche was a psychologist or that Carl Jung was like a you know very profound writer because a lot of these guys tapped into stuff that was very relevant that was very true especially about the, the human condition and what we do to ourselves to hide ourselves from the world it's kind of like what I, was, what I said about depression it's like depression same with the underground man he, he represses himself into the underground it's the same thing as someone who's got depression is deeply repressing their soul deeply repressing their spirit their spiritedness is not coming out through the body this is why i have such an interest in bioenergetics uh, why i probably will go into studying bioenergetics in a truly physical field because it is a truly physical field it's something that actually brings energy out of people so that they become more confident in what they're doing and actually fixes their issues instead of it just being like some form of talk therapy that you know can help at times but is fundamentally not something that's very useful that gets people into um uh, situations that confronts their anxiety because a lot of this stuff is is bodily based it's about actually doing the work for your body going out and doing these things you and, and this is why um so many individuals who don't do that they they get themselves stuck in these intellectual paradigms of of the labyrinth of the of, of the minotaur because they they delude themselves with conceptualizations of what people are without actually having first-hand experience of what those people are like and that puts you in a trap you're trapping yourself you are checkmating your own soul you're, you're checkmating your own ego to the point where you're at standstill and you're not actually proving yourself wrong as you should do proving your bias is wrong but the world isn't actually as terrible as uh you think it is and that, that you're not as damned to experience people as being annoying individuals 
as you may think they are, when really these are just projections onto a world which you have not experienced. And the reason why a lot of people are not experiencing these things is because they're fundamentally scared and fearful and, and rid with anxiety to actually go out and experience the world with people that they might actually enjoy being around. So it's like, that's why the, the Dostoevsky is so powerful in it. It gives people the, the pill of truth when it comes to uh, self-examination, like uh, knowing thyself. It gives you the pill of truth when it comes to trying to figure out who you are and what you should do and where you should go from here. So it's like, definitely apply these truths to yourself. See if you're one of these individuals where you are avoiding reality for your own conception of what it is without really knowing at all what it is. This is why the, no the, the Gnostics would talk about Gnosis coming only from first-hand experience, wisdom only coming from first-hand experience, and Gnosis only being attained because you've had that first-hand experience. You can't gain anything from second-hand uh, second knowledge, second-hand. It's not, it's not relevant, it's not relevant to you and it's not relevant to your own fulfillment as an individual. Now, if anything resonated with you in this video regarding alienation, feeling stuck in your life, being a young individual, not knowing where to go, not having a tribe behind you that can push you in a beneficial, positive way forward, then book in a free consultation call with me and my coaching team at Mayorum Society. A link in the description below will be found where you can book in a call with me, it'll be a discovery call, we can talk through all the problems that you're dealing with at the moment and see if you are a relevant fit to the coaching systems that we offer within Mayorum Society. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll speak to you all very soon.